This video is going to have a look at Christian bioethics and the remaining authoritative sources from which Christians develop their guiding ethical principles. If you haven't already done so, copy these guiding ethical principles down in your workbook. As we've already seen, Christians develop their bioethical principles from authoritative sources, situational ethics and natural law. This video is going to look at the authoritative sources such as the Magisterium of the Church, Experience and Logic and Reason and we will do a quick overview of what situational ethics is. On previous videos you have already looked at scripture as an authoritative source as well as natural law. So there are four sources of authority that Christians use to develop their guiding ethical principles and they are the Bible which we have already looked at in particular the teachings on agape love. We have already looked at natural law which is used um, mainly by the Catholic Church. The tradition of the church refers to the magisterium or teaching authority of the church and by church we mean those different Christian denominations. The purpose of this is to provide guidance and teachings on how Christians should live their lives. So the teaching authority or magisterium within the Catholic Church is the Pope, the Cardinals, the Bishops, Priests and some aspects of the laity like Church theologians. Similarly with other denominations we might be talking about the Patriarch if you're talking about the Orthodox Church. We might be talking about certain ministers within different Protestant churches. These church leaders sometimes they meet within their denomination like the Pope might meet with the Cardinals or they might meet as part of ecumenism and that is where different church leaders get together and they discuss issues that have ethical considerations. And if we have a look some different denominations down here and some of the ways in which they might develop documents that are disseminated to their Christian communities. So within the Catholic tradition uh, one of the things as we've already said that the Pope does is he writes encyclicals. A key encyclical that relates to our current topic of bioethics is Donum Vitae. I'd like you to find out what Donum Vitae is about and jot down some key points about that encyclical. Another source of authority in developing ethical guidelines is experience or inspirations of the Holy Spirit and this is closely connected to prayer. And so when we pray we are more attuned to the Holy Spirit working within us and that has an impact in dealing with the decisions and choices that Christians make in light of issues in the, that arise in their everyday lives. Closely connected to this idea of experience is this idea of conscience. It's the key point about conscience is that we need to have an informed conscience. Conscience, the word itself, is made up of two Latin words, con meaning with and scientia, which is knowledge. The Christian view of conscience is that when you are informed of the positives and negatives of a situation, when you know about what is taught about that issue within your faith denomination and if that teaching sits comfortably in the presence of God, with those three aspects you can make a decision with a conscience that is informed. There are plenty of examples of Bible references to conscience. I'd like you to find four biblical references from the New Testament that relate to conscience. The next authoritative source that assists Christians in developing ethical guidelines is the idea of logic and reason. We've been given a brain and we've been given this brain to be critical and develop logical arg arguments and procedures that can aid us in responding to ethical issues. Christian philosophers have incorporated logic and reason within the Christian faith. 
Finally, we have that third broad approach to ethical teaching and it's situation ethics. Situation ethics just simply means what is right or wrong in a given situation. So if in Christianity the foundation is love, whatever the situation, how do we respond in a loving way? Going back to our guiding ethical principles can be linked to the highlighted guiding ethical principles. I would like you to add these to your table. I want you to source uh, different quotes from different church documents that is going to support any of these four guiding ethical principles. It's important to remember that these authoritative sources as well as natural law and situation ethics work together because each of them has strengths and each of them has weaknesses. So if you have a look at scripture, it sees the basis for ethics as what is commanded by God in the Bible. But have a think about, write down some problems that might be associated with a biblical interpretation of ethical issues that arise. Similarly with natural law, certain actions go against our common nature that we're born with, that we all share, and are therefore intrinsically evil. Think of some weaknesses that might be inherent with this approach of natural law to bioethical teachings. Situation ethics espouses that a Christian should respond in love or should respond with love regardless of the situation. What are, might be some problems with this approach of situation ethics in responding to ethical issues? We have tradition, that is where the teaching authority of the church, i.e., different denominations, what might be some problems that arise out of this? authoritative approach. The main issue for a Christian who attempts to follow Christian morality is how these four sources of authority as well as natural law and situation ethics, how they can be balanced so that they work together to enable a decision to be made in response to ethical issues. Now you need to write down that heading, Varying Approaches to Christian Bioethical Teachings, and then copy down each of the different Christian denominations and the sources they use to develop their different responses to bioethical issues.